So I'm gonna do this. Most likely this is going to be a rant. Rafi's rants! Hola, you amazing artists. Today I am going to talk to you about pricing, but I'm going to talk to you about pricing your art in not any way, shape, or form that maybe you're going to find helpful, or maybe you will. I don't know, because the thing about pricing is that even with uh, the old video that I have out there where I talk about pricing and I try to give a perspective on pricing as far as like per square inch or in materials, thinking about it in a very analytical way. Um, the fact is that when it comes to pricing your art, it's like you're trying to quantify something emotional that is completely and utterly tied up into your insecurity, into how secure you feel, how much demand there is. It really is an emotional thing. It is really, really hard to quantify and there is no right or wrong way to price your art. This is going to be a little bit of a rant and it's not a rant to, to you guys. It is a rant to all those people who are staunch believers that you should price your art like this and a real artist prices their art like this and blah, 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 blah. Because in all honesty, it just makes shit way too confusing when it comes down to pricing your art. Pricing your art is an inside job. It is your art. You're the one that created it. You're the one that's paying for the materials. You're the one that is determining what the demand is. You're the one that gets to decide what your art is going to be priced at. It doesn't matter if you're pricing it by the square foot, if you're pricing it by the square inch, if you're pricing it based on your hourly rate, it does not matter. Ultimately, it always comes back to you determining what your price of the art is going to be. Now, the thing is that what we don't understand that you cannot quantify with all these like statistics and this is the way that you blah, 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 is that there is a lot of insecurity wrapped up into it. You are basically pricing something that is so emotionally connected to you that your value, your sense of value of self is wrapped up into it. So like a lot of people will price their stuff too high, even though they don't believe that that's what it's worth. A lot of people will price their stuff too low, even though they believe that it's worth more, because it's all wrapped up in your own personal sense of value. So when it comes to pricing your art, you have people out there that are going to look at the same work of art, and they're going to say that it's too expensive. You're going to have other people that look at that same exact work of art and say that it's priced too low. Everybody has their own determination of what value is. So you get to choose what price to put your artwork out there at. When I first got started, I was selling uh, works of art that were small for like $5 a piece. I was selling 16 by 20 canvases for like $35 to $40. Why? Be not because I was like, well, I got to price my stuff low so I could get into the market. It was because I was super insecure. I, I didn't know how to price art. And if I looked at art that was out there, which is another big thing that really, really makes things confusing. Listen, when you go and you try to price art in your area, which is fine. If you want to price art in your area and see comparatively what it's, what it's priced at, because that way you could see what people are used to paying for art in your area. That's fine if you want to do that. But remember, these are all just guidelines that are going to help you. They're not rules. They're not the end all be all. It's just something that you get to look at so you could figure out what price it is that you want to do. There are some artists out there that charge $2 per square inch. There are some artists out there that charge a dollar per square inch. There are some artists out there that charge $5 a square inch. And there are some out there that charge 34 cents a square inch. You get to decide what it is that's fair to you. When you're first getting started and you're getting your feet wet, you're going to feel insecure. You're going to really want to get yourself out there. You're going to be trying to price your art in a way that, that makes sense to you and makes sense to the people that are buying. Nobody knows who you are. So yeah, of course, you're going to price your stuff a little bit lower. The moment that there starts to be a demand for your stuff, then you start pricing your stuff a little bit higher. But really, when it comes down to it, 
It's like you're looking for formulas here and there, and we all want to find the perfect formula, but I'm here to tell you that the perfect formula does not exist. You are the one that gets to determine what the price is. If you want to use a formula, use a formula, but understand that deep down, no matter what formula you use, you're the one that gets to determine what the price of your art is. I use a formula. I use per square inch. And so my per square inch, I have a price that I've been able to raise over the years whenever it's time for me to face that insecurity of raising my prices. Is my artwork expensive? Sure. Some people think my artwork is expensive. Uh, some people think that I way, way low price, low ball myself with my art. So, I mean, if you're basing your pricing on what you think other people are paying, that is too diverse of a crowd. I've heard so many artists say, like, you got to price your stuff low. In fact, this week I got a comment on here saying that you got to start off by pricing your stuff low and you got to do this. There are all these rules out there that a lot of artists, because it works, I could easily say price your stuff low and then slowly raise your prices. But what is low? What is priced too low? What is priced high? What is priced too high? There, There is no one answer for that. And that's one of the reasons that pricing your art is so confusing for so many people. Because you think that you could get it wrong. When in actuality, like, you, you can't get it wrong. It's your stuff. You get to decide what the price is. That's why in the videos, whenever I talk about pricing, I say make sure that you feel like the pricing is fair to you and make sure that it's, f that you feel that it's fair to the person that's buying it. Doesn't matter whether or not the person that's buying it, uh, one person thinks that it's priced too high or one person thinks that it's priced too low. It's not, that's not what you're basing your price on. And so many people are so worried about pricing their stuff too high or pricing their stuff too low. And it, listen, if you create a work of art and you sell it for too low, you don't need the market to be the one to tell you that you sold it too low. You're going to feel like uh, you're not getting the value of the work that you put into that piece. That is a very personal thing. You know that you've priced it too low. If you put a price on something because you have some calculation that tells you that this piece should be uh, $1,200 in the market, but like you're looking at that piece and you're cringing every time you look at the price, well, guess what? That price is too high for you. I just talked to somebody and she was telling me about her pricing and she had priced a piece that, that in my opinion, I was like, well, that was way too low. And, and I asked her like, what is too high and too low? And she's like, I guess it's all wrapped up in my insecurity. I'm like, yeah, I, exactly. That's why you cannot quantify pricing into like some kind of pricing structure. And no matter how much you try to do it, it is something that you are constantly going to be tweaking and evolving and tweaking and evolving as you go. You don't have a constant with pricing. You're not going to find one method and then decide that that's going to be the end all be all you're going to work through that evolution of your own pricing as you are growing in your career as you're growing in your confidence and as there is more of a demand for your art and you know it, you're you're going to be the one that determines what is fair to you and what is fair to the other person from your perspective, this is something that evolves. There have been times where I've raised my prices up too high out of insecurity because I thought that, well, if I'm going to do this show, I should probably price my stuff up higher. And then there were times where I priced my stuff too low. It all comes down to like your experience and determining what is fair to you. And really, honestly, the best way to get that experience is to put your stuff out there and lowball yourself with some work and overprice some other pieces and see how it is that you feel about that. Not, not what the response is of the public. And a lot of people, that's, that's the problem is that a lot of people base their strategies on pricing due to what the response is. There is a little bit of consideration that goes into that. Did I price it that way? Because I genuinely feel that that is fair to the person that's buying it and that that's fair to me. Or am I pricing it this high because my artwork needs to be priced high so that it gets into a gallery and blah, 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 all that stuff. Or 
is my stuff priced too low? Is it like flying off the shelves and everybody's buying it because it's like a swap meet? It all comes back to you and how you're feeling. Pricing your art is not about finding a formula and it is not analytical. The analytical is there to help guide you and give you an idea of where it is that you want to be. Um, there, the way that I use the square inch, uh, pricing is that I have a high end price that I price by square inch. And then I give myself what I call the insecurity discount, right? So the insecurity discount is not a discount that anyone knows about. It is basically like, Where I would like to be that is slightly outside of my comfort zone is at maybe a dollar twenty-five a square inch, right? So I do a dollar twenty-five a square inch, but then when I come up with the price for the piece, I realize that maybe that's pricing a little higher than I'm than I'm than I could get comfortable with. And so then maybe I'll lower the price a little bit to something that is fair. But it has to be fair to me. And it has to be fair to the person that's purchasing it. That's really all it comes down to. I use pricing structures to help me get to an idea of a place that I want to be with the price. And then I will tweak that based on the emotional stuff that happens with me. So when it comes down to pricing, is there a right way or a wrong way to price your art? No, there is not. Because pricing is an inside job. It is an emotional thing. And really, it is your creation. You get to determine how much it is that you are going to price your art. And to the artist that contacted me on Facebook, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just yelling at the whole idea of this confusion because, like... There's so many people out there giving all kinds of advice on how to price your art. Uh, Last year, someone told me that one of the artist mentors that she was following was like, well, you got to price your art at $2 a square inch. And and that's that's why how real artists price their art and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And like, really, you're going to use pricing as a guide to to help uh, make your status seem bigger as an artist? Like... Basically, we're all, we all have to get started somewhere. And when it comes to pricing, you're not going to find the answers to pricing out there from someone else. You are going to find the answers to the pricing of your particular work, your work that only you could create. And you're going to have to determine what that price is. And yes, there are all kinds of formulas. Use the formulas, but ultimately, even within those formulas, you're the one that decides what the what the square inch price is going to be, what your hourly rate is going to be, all of that stuff. And it's all neatly wrapped up and tied into our insecurities and our securities. And it's a it's an emotional thing. So figure it out. You can't get it wrong. It is a work in progress. It will always be a work in progress. My pricing structure has evolved and changed and morphed over the last 10 years more times than I could even begin to explain. So don't allow the pricing to scare you and don't be scared to raise your prices a little bit if you feel that you are not being fair to yourself. And don't be afraid to lower the price if you're, if you're like really uncomfortable with that price. You can always get your stuff there at some point. And yes, I know that there's a rule like don't Lower your prices once you raise your price. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. This is your art career. This is your business. This is, this is who you are. It is your art. You get to choose whatever you damn well want to choose when it comes to your art and how to price it is one of those things. And that's it, you guys. I'm done with my rant. I, I'm gonna get back into the studio and back to work. And I adore you guys. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on pricing. Uh, and just, uh, you know, whether or not it is an emotional thing for you. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, well, I have this structure that blah, 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 blah. And that's fine if you want to share that stuff. But really, how much have you realized that like pricing is really, really has to do a lot. It's really tied in with your emotions and there is no right or wrong answer as far as pricing. It's just what you're comfortable with and go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more rants like this, I guess you could click over here to subscribe and that's it. 
Thank you so much. Adios.